Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Alex's Ashen Art Show. Today we are doing another Street Fighter character. We're doing Chun-Li and we're doing the Street Fighter 6 design. And uh, if you've seen some of these other videos before, you might remember that I mentioned uh, that last year at this point that there was a few characters from the Marvel vs. Capcom 2 mural uh, who I wasn't super happy with how I drew them. And Chun-Li is one of those characters. So uh, that's kind of part of why I'm redoing this one. So. Uh, not even redoing it, but just doing another drawing. Um, so this time I've gone for a slightly more dynamic pose, and again we're doing the Street Fighter Six design, which in parts is easier than the classic design, and in parts is harder. Uh, in parts it's easier in that the buttons are a little easier to draw, uh, they're a little less complicated, um, but then in other elements it's harder because the dress is significantly more complicated. <laughs> so we'll get to that. Anyways, we got some posing to talk about today, so that'll be uh, a thing which we haven't really gone over in a while. So yeah, anyways, I'll roll the intro and then we'll begin. So yeah. <laughs> This is what we got. In terms of our pose, uh, this was a Frankenstein job, as you might expect. So what I mean when I say a Frankenstein job, what I mean is that I had several different uh, semi-conflicting pieces of reference which I kind of hodgepodge together and then uh, made work with the base sketch. Which I think, again, I think I managed to get it to work. The only thing that's maybe a problem is there's a bit of a weird perspective thing going on here with this hand and this hand, because what's happening with this arm here is that the arm is bent. Uh, so, what you're seeing it is basically this part here is being covered. So, in, in essence, you're only seeing like a weird part of the forearm and a weird part of the bicep, which is kind of creating this odd shape. Um, so, I might see if I can maybe fix this. Let's see if there's a way that I can maybe look, make this look a little better. Because as it stands, it doesn't look great. Um, and yeah, so for the sake of my own sanity, I colored in little bits in the base sketch just so that I could remember, uh, just so that I could remember which parts of the dress were blue and which parts were uh, white. So yeah, the thing with Chun Li's design in Street Fighter Six is that, uh, as I say, there's parts of it which are easier, parts of it which are harder. Parts of it are easier in the sense that, uh, again, the buns are a lot simpler here because they're just the hair. There's no, uh, there's, it, it, it's just a tie on them here. It's not like a, a full thing. Um, and we don't have to do spikes on the uh, the little wrist guards. Uh, so here it's just kind of more basic jewelry. Uh, and so that makes for something a little easier to draw. Um, but yeah, the dress itself is pretty complicated because of all the patterning on it and uh, you can't just not do it because it's such a large element of the design here so makes it somewhat harder i i did alter her hair ever so slightly because um i made i made the little bit of fringe a little longer um because normally it's kind of tucked up so that's uh that's how it is uh in the game but here i've just made it a little bit longer so um yeah, what else was I going to say? So yeah, as I say, posing. So yeah, when it came to what I was saying about this being a Frankenstein job, that kind of fits in with the angle, you know, posing. So the pose that I'm obviously going for here is just a pretty basic high kick. But uh, realistically, the, this actually, you can even see from the angle of this leg here, that this leg is angling uh, this leg is angling kind of strangely. It's angling, leaning more towards down there. And that's because I don't have the vertical space uh, to have the high kick being straight up. Because originally it was going to be straight up, but then I realized that things would be very zoomed out if I ended up doing that. So I decided to bring things in a little bit more, but angle everything more towards that way. Uh, just so that making I suppose a bit more of a I feel like a better use of the space um, so yeah I will have to alter again like as I say the the arms are kind of mostly where a lot of my Frankensteining came in uh, so when I say that I mean if like these are arms that weren't in the original piece of reference that I was using 
Uh, so, the, the, yeah, originally the pose was a little less uh, kind of open. It was more of a closed pose, which isn't necessarily what I want. Because I, while it would make my life easier to cover up a lot of the dress, it's kind of no point in doing that. Because uh, if I'm going to do that, then there's no real point in doing the bloody drawing, is there? If I'm covering a major part of the design, then not much of a point in doing it. Uh, but, yeah. So I'm probably going to do some effects or something here just to sell the motion of the kick. Probably something like that. Just something basic. Probably just use one of my paintbrushes to do that. Um, I'll mix in probably some paints or something in the background. Do some kind of like bluey stuff. Uh, something like that. I don't know. That's what I'm thinking maybe. Is uh, go for some sort of, yeah, kind of like... Kind of painted in blues. Something simple like that. Something not too crazy, but yeah, not too... Uh, yeah, not too complicated, not too simple either. So I'll use some paintbrushes for that later. Um, yeah, what else do I need to talk about posing-wise? Yeah, posing-wise, again, the kind of... There's stuff like, oh yeah, the dress, the, the dress has to kind of flop over this way, which is why you can't see the, the kind of back part here, even though the back part is actually bigger than the front part. Um, you can't really see it here because technically it would also be flopping out this way. Uh, you shouldn't really be able to see any of it here. So, yeah, realistically speaking, I think that's all the stuff that I really needed to go over. Uh, yeah, and also another reason why I didn't include the inside of the dress is because it has its own separate patterning on it, which I don't want to have to hand draw. Uh, so, yeah, there's that too. Uh, I mean, I'm already having to draw the... Uh, the, the, it's the pretty complex patterning on the actual front of the dress. The last thing I want to have to do is draw the complex patterning on the inside of it. So yeah, uh, I decided not to do that. But um, yeah, originally I had the tail of, of this uh, bun visible, but I felt like it made it just too kind of messy over here. Uh, so I decided to just leave it be this one as the only uh, tail on the bun visible. So, yeah. Um, all in all, I think that's all I needed to say. Um, I did, yeah, obviously, because we're dealing with a Street Fighter character who is, you know, Street Fighter characters are, they have cartoony proportions. I kind of did a little bit of that here, of where I naturally, because this is Chun-Li, I had to vastly amplify the size of the legs, specifically the thigh. Uh, I'm probably gonna need to amplify this, uh, the calf here a little bit more because it's a little, as compared to the thigh, it's looking more and more strange the longer I look at it. So, yeah. Uh, I'll have to probably, yeah, increase the size of the calf a little bit there. Uh, but yeah, I think that's everything I wanted to say before we get started. So, yeah, I will uh, begin these details. And uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually not going to detail the dress all that much. Uh, namely the obviously the kind of pattern parts I'm not going to detail those in because I'll just get whenever I'm doing the colors I'll just do that over everything and that will be kind of just the easier way of doing it because there's two shades of blue which I have to worry about there's the shade on the dress and there's the shade on the leggings which are two different shades so yeah I'll have to worry about those separately um, but yeah so I think that is enough preamble I can probably get started now so yeah uh, oh yeah I also included this I'm not actually gonna draw this in as the edge here but that's just there for my own sake later of where I'll have to paint in the uh, the, the like slight red eyeliner I'll have to paint that in uh, and then this is just for my own sake later to remind myself of where that sits so I'll have to basically erase a shape into it more or less or, you know, I might even just do it in the color phase. I might just do it there where I'll just put like a little red eyeliner in, something like that. And then I'll have to do the bluey eyeshadow later as well. So, yeah, anyways, I will do this and then I'll be back for a bit and then I'll do more stuff. So, yeah, details now uh, and then I'll be back at some point. So, yeah.
Okay, so that is our details done, meaning it is now time for the colors. So yeah, as I said, our details didn't take very long. I did them, well, I say that it didn't take very long. They weren't very complicated. Uh, there were two hours, but you know, it didn't take that long, I suppose, comparatively. Some of these things take a very long time. Our colors will be pretty simple. Largely, there's nothing super crazy we have to do with them. It's like it's not a huge color palette. Um, largely, I mean, it's just what well, there's the skin tone, there's the uh, there's hair color, um, eyes, lips, uh, white, light blue, dark blue, gold, and black. Um, and that's all the colors really. There's not a huge number of colors. Uh, however, I'm going to do the eyeliner in this section. I'll have that reminder in the base sketch to work off of, and then whenever we're doing the painting... Actually, I'll probably do that during this section, because uh, I'll, I'll put in the uh, eyeshadow as well, the kind of bluey eyeshadow. Put that in, because that won't take very long. Uh, and then, obviously, that'll lead us right into the painted shading. Uh, which, during that section, is whenever I'll probably do a, the, the background details. Actually, I'll probably have to throw in a background during this, because white is such a major color here, so... I won't throw any details on the background, but I will put in the background. But yeah, anyways, uh, I'll do these colors, and then I will be back to do the painted shading. But yeah. So, that was our colors, um, and yeah, within that I decided to throw in a lot of other stuff. So, I threw in, uh, I fixed the, uh, I did the eyeliner, uh, I kind of fixed it up a little bit uh, later as well, of where I added the kind of, I used a, one of the paintbrushes to kind of erase it up so it kind of trails out a little bit better, uh, and then I added in the eyeshadow, which is obviously blue, and I used a bit of a subtle paintbrush to kind of move it up, a smoky brush to kind of move it up. Like that. I uh, did all the um, parts of the dress, which was very difficult uh, to try and kind of match, because uh, I was using a slightly darker blue than my uh, uh, my base sketch, but only a slightly darker blue, making it kind of hard to discern. Um, 
And yeah, as you can tell, the, the blue on the leggings are different than the blue on the dress. Uh, if only a little bit. Uh, but yeah, that's mostly just to make my life easier in this phase, being the painted shading. So I obviously did these smears in the background here. Uh, and so I made the, uh, the proper background color uh, a kind of almost white blue. There is a slight blueiness to it. Um, and so obviously the smears here are, then, are blue on the very edge into a kind of a whitish kind of blue color. There is a difference. I mean, if I zoom in right there, you can kind of see the difference around here-ish of it kind of like around there where it kind of smears in. But just to add a bit more motion to kind of sell the motion of it. That like, this is swing yeah, this arm's swinging upwards like that. That leg is swinging upwards like that. Don't question the the, the nature of the pose because it doesn't really make any sense because she's kind of tilted like that. So that's not really how someone can do that. They'd be leaning forward a little too much and would probably fall over immediately after doing this. So yeah, um, that's kind of all that stuff that I needed to do. I did yeah, all these smears and everything like that. So now on, on the painted shading, there's a few little things which I'm going to try and do. So in the game, the leggings have a very particular kind of shading to them, where they have like a slight kind of uh, sheen on them. And I'm going to try and do that. I'm going to try and do that as kind of different from the dress, because obviously the dress is going to be mostly kind of normal shading, but I might give it a tiny bit of kind of like sheen along the top of it because it's unclear what kind of material it is, uh, but it seems to kind of catch the light in in a very soft way, where the darker parts aren't necessarily really dark, or whenever uh, shadows hit it, it doesn't make it super dark, but the kind of lighter parts are definitely a lot lighter, uh, whereas with the leggings they tend to get kind of darker at the edges, uh, they tend to have yeah, kind of darker parts to the shading on them, so I'll try and match that, um, and we'll see how I manage. But yeah, I'll do the painted shading, and then I'll be back to the detailed shading and the light line uh, afterwards, and that'll be basically us. This one's been mostly kind of quick so far, uh, mostly because I haven't really had much... Mm, well, I've, it's been, again, like... This is one of those ones where it's not, like, tremendously difficult, but it's just little things that kind of take a little extra time. For example, if I didn't have to do all the detailing on the dress, that would make things significantly faster. But the fact of the matter is, I did! Uh, and so that made the colors take a lot longer than they normally would, whereas the details here weren't necessarily as long as they otherwise might have been. For example, the kind of large part of the details that took quite a while would have been the face, really. That was kind of the longest part, but realistically speaking, again, I've talked about this before, but mid shots, which is what we're doing here, it's a slightly more zoomed out mid shot, uh, just to fit the whole leg in. But, um,. Yeah, when it comes to mid shots, it's at a certain level of, I'm basically doing these at a very kind of medium level of detail, which is to say that if I was to do a full body shot, I wouldn't have to do as much detail because it'd be more zoomed out and everything would be more compact, so I could just exempt certain parts entirely. And whenever I'm doing a close up, it's all so close that a lot of the details are actually quite spread out in terms of the actual space. But whenever I'm doing a mid shot, it's a case of where all the details, it, there's just enough space of where there's a lot of detail visible, and also a lot of it's quite compact because of the fact that it's a mid shot. Uh, but there are certain things which I can maybe get away with exempting here and there, but not much. So realistically speaking, I'm having to do a lot of detail in a very small amount of space. So it makes things take a little longer. But anyways, regardless, We'll do this painted shading, and we'll be back to do the detailed shading at light line. So yeah.
All right, so that is our painted shading done. I did the best to try and keep it subtle. So largely what I did was I kind of skewed the darks to be just slightly darker to slightly more purple versions of the existing colors. And then with the lights, I just made it a slightly lighter version of the existing color. So in the case of a lot of this, there is a slight kind of yellowy sheen to a lot of it, apart from the explicit blues. So whenever I put on the gradient maps, because the gradient maps are all going to be very blue, that'll end up getting kind of washed down to a blue anyways, but it won't be as uniform as it might otherwise be. It'll still kind of maintain a separate shade. So the skin won't be made incredibly blue or incredibly pale. It'll kind of maintain a somewhat similar shade so that it's not super washed out is the kind of idea. Um, I don't, yeah, I don't want it to be completely washed out. So that's where we're at, of where I want to kind of maintain the color to a, to a degree. Uh, so that, yeah, I didn't get super, super washed out or anything. And uh, yeah, so I think with some of these, I managed to get what I wanted out of them, like with the dress. I think I managed to get the, the lights to be quite white uh, here, and then the darks on the dress to kind of be soft uh, for the most part. And then with the leggings, I did my best to not go overboard with the kind of sheen so that I didn't have to go through and do all the layer fiddling because that stuff is takes a bit. Um, so I made it kind of subtle. I layered it up through lighter shades. You probably saw me doing that before. It kind of went from, uh, I went up and up and up when it came to the shades. So that eventually it got to this point of where it was uh, pretty light but I kept that to be kind of a really subtle kind of through line moving through from the top to the bottom where it was just a kind of soft sheen of white and then the rest of it kind of just layers out and it kind of like peters in or yeah it kind of thins into the lightest color so the darkest at the edges and then the lightest is in the very middle so that kind of gets it that slight sheen of where I think it's subtle enough and it also because I layered it up it has a similar kind of look to the smears in the background so there's that I suppose um, but yeah so with all that said uh, I don't think I need to uh, yeah really go over a huge amount else here I think I kind of did uh, yeah I think I kind of went over everything which is just to say yeah I kind of just did the basics with the painted shading I did forget to shade the foot initially so I had to go and uh, get the the tones that I'd used for the skin again because I forgot to do them uh, but yeah, I did do it and I fixed it. So yeah, uh, now the upcoming section is just the detailed shading and the light line and then that's us. So yeah, when it comes to the colors that I picked, I picked some very kind of, I picked a very pale yellow and a very dull purple. So what's going to happen is whenever the gradient maps go on, those are going to get, lit. I put them, I made them kind of more neutral versions of the ones that I'd normally pick so that they're not too, so they don't exactly put up like a massive fight whenever it comes to gradient map so they don't look out of place and they don't get crunched down into like a weird gray color so they'll get slightly skewed more over towards the blue and uh, because they're already pale it's not going to cause much of a fuss not going to put up a fight but anyways i will carry on i will do this detailed shading in the light line and then i'll be back to do the gradient maps and i'll wrap up okay Okay, so that's that done, and yeah, so that means that is basically us done. I need to do some gradient maps, which I will do now. This should be reasonably quick. So, as I said before, the idea here is that we're going to be trying to... Uh, again, all the colors that I... or the, the shading and stuff that I picked was moderate. Um, 
I'm gonna go with this kind of like purpley color as the darkest. Uh, bring it up a tiny bit. We're gonna go up pretty soft, I think, is gonna be our kind of MO here. And make this one about there, put it about here. Now let me even put it over there more. Uh, no, we're gonna wanna actually have it be something, because if we have it be too muted, then it's not gonna look great. Uh, which means our mid color needs to be somewhere like here. Have it be like there. Do that. This shouldn't be too dark, but it is going to be a cold color palette. So that's oh, that's our overlay, which we're not going to be using. So we're going to be using soft light. I'm going to turn it down quite a bit because, again, as I say, it's quite intense. But yeah, see what I meant before, where it's not like because uh, I used like because uh, I used the purples and the and the yellows as my shading colors largely. Uh, like the hair here still has a degree of that shade in it, even though it's now much paler and much colder. Same with the skin tone. Skin tone hasn't lost its original kind of warmth. It's not become a cold tone now. Uh, all of the, the kind of warmer tones are still there. They're just a little bit more muted. So now I'm going to create a duplicate layer of this. Create another gradient map. I'm going to set that on the luminosity. I'm going to set that to 20%. 20% if I can manage it. There we go. And then I'm going to create a duplicate of that, which will be a color burn. And that will be 5%. So that just does, that just kind of deepens. Realistically, you're, all it's doing is making our dark colors a little darker. That's all it's doing. Bringing up the contrast a tiny bit is all I really need it to do. So now I'll grab my texture. And then I will write up. So let me see if I can get out of this texture. Oh, yeah, all in all, this one hasn't been particularly difficult. I just had to take a lot of breaks during it, which is kind of what's extended the length of this whole process by quite a bit. Uh, otherwise, it probably would have been reasonably quick. Because, I mean, so far, recording wise, I mean, it's only been four hours and ten minutes, which is, I mean, it's a tad shorter than ordinarily. We ordinarily go for I don't think it's. It might actually throw us in like three and a half hours or something like that. We don't want to go too crazy on the texture, so I'll put it at 25%. Just so now it's so it's there, but not too aggressive. So let me have a look here, see how visible it is on some of this stuff. Yeah, it just lightens things up a little bit. And again, it doesn't like make the skin or anything too blotchy looking, because that was a problem which I was actually having during the painted shading was that the skin for some reason was coming out really blotchy. Uh, I don't know what it was about it, but it just kept coming out like really blotchy for some reason. Don't know why it kept happening, but it did. So, yeah, that was annoying. But I did manage to fix that problem anyways. Because uh, whenever I went over and added the lighter, the lighter shade, it kind of fixed that problem to a degree. But it's, uh, yeah, they managed to mask that mostly, the kind of blotchiness of that tone. And so, yeah, that is us basically so yeah is there anything else i needed to say yeah i feel like i managed to kind of sell the motion of the kick a little bit better i think that the streaks in the background help that massively um it's funny that this is predominantly blue and blue appears to be the color that either my screen here or my screen here uh just doesn't display correctly i'm not sure which one of these screens is display displaying the blues correctly I would be inclined to believe that it's my monitor in front of me that's actually displaying them correctly. Because, yeah, on the tablet, a lot of this comes out as much more purpley. Even though on the screen, it, uh, on my screen at least, it comes out, comes out as slightly more on the uh, uh, closer to green than purple. Uh, as uh, uh, With the blues. So, yeah, uh, that's really the only thing. But yeah, I think the, the, the smearing it helps a little bit to uh, sell the motion, make things look a little bit more dynamic. Um, yeah, I think really the only thing where it's like, uh, maybe that's a little weird, is uh, is the hands. The hands maybe, like um, this hand here is maybe a little big as compared to this hand here. This hand's very small, this one's very big. So, uh, I mean, there's a degree of perspective going on here. Realistically speaking, they're not um, like the... Uh, there is a degree of perspective, not a huge amount, obviously, but a little bit. Because um, there's like a, a slight turn, I mean, you can even see it on the dress. Um, yeah, you can see it on the sleeves, the sleeve on the bigger arm. 
is slightly longer than the one on the other arm. So, I mean, there's a, a small amount of perspective going on here. Again, as I say, not a huge amount, but uh, yeah. To be honest with you, I think the base sketch of this was actually harder than the, the doing the actual drawing because when it came to the base sketch, a lot of the stuff that I had to do for that, um, like I had to do obviously all the you know, screwing around with the reference images and all this stuff, but uh, yeah. So, realistically speaking, yeah. Uh, I think I'm happy with it, all in all. Um, yeah, so with all that said, I think I'll do my outro and then I'll say goodbye and that'll be us. So, um, yeah, something which I'm realizing is you can always tell whenever this is the first recording I'm doing in a week because I always forget to mention uh, to uh, to mention uh, leaving comments at the start of the video. It's normally a thing I do at the start of the video, but you can usually tell whenever it's the first recording I've done in a week because I almost always forget the first thing in a week. So yeah, I forgot this time. So yeah, if you've got any suggestions uh, of characters or things you'd like to see me draw, um, you can leave them in the comments. I'll see them. Probably. Um, and, uh, yeah. If, uh, uh, um, yeah, as I say, if you've got any suggestions of characters or things you'd like to see me draw, I'd uh, like to hear them. Uh, but, uh, be polite. Uh, be polite. Leave a nice comment. I'll read it. Uh, see, I'll see it regardless. But, uh, it'd be preferable if you were nice about it. Because uh, that will greatly uh, determine whether or not I'll do it or not. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, anyways. Uh, yeah. If you like the video, do whatever it is that you'd normally do, whether that be liking or not. I would, of course, prefer if you liked it, but I can't make you do it. So, you know, do it or don't. I don't mind. Um, so long as it's not negative, I'm happy. Uh, yeah. And if you want to subscribe, it's the same deal. You know where the subscribe button is. I don't have to tell you. Uh, you presumably watched a YouTube video before, so, again... I don't know if that actually helps or not, telling you where it is. It's it's below the video. It's where it normally is. Anyways. Uh, and if you choose to watch the next video, I'll see you next time. So, with all that said, that is us. So, I'll say goodbye and I'll leave you. So, bye-bye.